Hey folks, uh, another project, getting rid, getting rid of lead acid batteries. This uh, little gel cell or assembled glass mat, lead acid, 12 volts. So it's got six cells in series, uh, voltage range typically about 11 and a half up to maybe 14.8 at the end of charge cycle. And uh, this came out of, uh, it's used to power a little pump in a backpack sprayer that we use on our farm for uh, organic pest control solutions and potentially foliar feeds and things like that. Uh, so this one gives you about, this one's finished, but uh, a similar, this format gives about five amp hours at 12 volts nominal. And if we rebuild a pack with uh, lithium iron phosphate cells, like these K2 energy cells, which are 3.8 amp hours. Uh, and we do four in series to get the same voltage range. Uh, 4S lithium iron phosphate is a fantastic drop-in substitute for things that are used to lead acid 12 volts. So this will be three parallel, four series, and we'll get three times 3.8, which is like 11 some. Uh, so we'll get 11 amp hours in almost the same form factor. It's a tiny bit taller, but otherwise it uh, straps right in to the sprayer in the same configuration. I don't have to modify the sprayer at all. And I'm going to get uh, two and a half times the runtime. But uh, I'm not going to just weld it up like that. I'm going to Put this BMS on it, which is just a little, I think these are about mm, seven or eight dollars each, maybe, maybe as much as ten. And it's a relatively low current, 40 amp, 4S, and it's marked lithium iron phosphate, so it's the right voltages for this pack. So first I'm going to try coating it in uh, epoxy and see if that works. Something tells me this isn't going to go great with one-handed, but I'm just mixing up epoxy and then I'm just going to try to coat the upper surface of the circuit board. Okay, screw this, I'm trying to shoot video at the same time. I'm going to try to do this properly and then maybe video it after. Yeah, that, that wasn't, uh, doesn't seem to have turned out half bad. It hasn't set yet, but, uh, conforms nicely. Looks promising. We'll let it cure, and then I'll flip it over and do the other side. Okay, so now I've got, um, bits of nickel strip soldered on in all the relevant locations for the main negative zero and then each intervening step after the first cell after the second after the third and then the final main positive and then output of the uh, BMS and these two white guys um, they look pretty small gauge but they're they have almost as much copper in them as these outputs they just have a it's a wire with a really thin jacket that I had to buy for a an e-bike motor. So now I'm gonna solder it all onto this, hopefully having it come out more or less like my sketch. And uh, yeah, so got it all welded up uh, as is my custom. I made a stupid mistake right off the bat and I got my orientation reversed with respect to my drawing. So all of my wire leads are slightly the wrong length the wire routing might not be as tidy but I'm pretty sure I can clean it up okay the spot welds are all right you can see this one I welded on in the wrong place and had to rip it off and then feel like resoldering it so you know little little flaws as are expected first time you do anything but looks promising time to wrap it up and insulate it uh, I checked the voltage at the output and BMS is uh, letting power through so looks promising. Well I think I'm just about done here. I've got the pack 
assembled, pretty well insulated with a bit of barley paper on either side and zip tied. I think I'll put some gobs of epoxy to pin down the BMS and then maybe I could get rid of the unsightly zip ties, but they're working for now. So it's plugged into a load tester and uh, I was able to run it up to, I don't know, full 250 watts uh, with the voltage dropping only to about 11 and a half. So uh, I'm running it at uh, 3.8 amps, which is the load for this particular application for the pump motor. So I want to see how many amp hours I get. Find some slimy old rubber to just protect the BMS a bit. And then I'm gonna wrap it up in this, tape it all up with uh, some impermeable 3M membrane and uh, start testing it in the field. So yeah, big upgrade from the five amp hour lead. A lot more capacity in the same amount of space. Cool, man. Okay, I forgot to record some steps. It's gotten further along. Uh, spot welding went fine, and then barley paper on both sides. And then the BMS is in here, protected under a piece of rubber. Uh, this tape is this fancy, stretchy 3M roofing membrane tape. It's really spectacular stuff because you can just kind of stretch it over irregularities. Ultimately, I removed the um, zip ties because they sucked. And once there was enough of this membrane tape holding it together, it wasn't necessarily. And the two ends, because it, it sits like this in the application, so there's a, an extra rubber pad here and here. And the side with the BMS also has a rubber pad over it. And then as a strain relief, this area here is oozed full of silicone so that it, the cables get yanked on uh, as the strain gets distributed. So now I'm just going to wrap it up into something like this, which is just a plastic sheet that I had kicking around and folded up. And then a bit more tape, and it ought to be, uh, you know, if I do a careful job sealing it up with the 3M tape, it ought to be waterproof. And okay, pack is uh, finished, working, labeled, tested. So it tests out at uh, 11 and a half amp hours or 145 watt hours. The BMS is tucked inside, and just. Uh, there's no fuse because of the BMS. I think that's adequate, but uh, at least these connectors are pretty safe. And so compared to the uh, lead pack that it's replacing, this one tested 4.4 amp hours. And so very marginally bigger, fits into the same spot in the sprayer. Sorry. And provides 11 amp hours in place of 4.4. So, uh, last little bits. I made up a, a Y connector that will go from the battery pack, provide a charge port on the outside, uh, tie into the original wiring so that I don't have to change that even though I hate spade connectors or fast ons or whatever these are called. Um, the motor is only, let's see, there's the pump motor. I think you can see the specs go upside down, 3.5 amps. So that's uh, not a big deal. So yeah, this is a, a solo AccuPower 416 sprayer. All that's in there is a 12 volt pump, rocker switch that selects high and low speed, an inline fuse, a little potted PCB assembly with uh, some means, maybe a DC-DC or some other little bit of circuitry to give the low speed. Um, so that the, the so battery power in and then into here with signal from there chooses high or low. High is a uh, full pack voltage to the pump and low speed 
is a little bit lower. I haven't measured it. Must be, I, I don't know enough circuitry to guess what's in there, but I pulled it off and it's all potted in epoxy. And uh, given that this is a sprayer, I've been trying to do everything as tidy and uh, water resistant as I can. But uh, yeah, I'll finish assembling it and then show you the finished product. So this is pretty much wrapped up. Battery is installed and connected to the pigtail that also runs over here to the charge port and the charge port because this is the only kind of charge port with a bulkhead or a panel mount it it leaves this kind of dangerous like if I bridge those with other than my finger um, it's the battery main contact and so it'll arc uh, the other half of an XT connector is safer because you'd need to make a special fork in order to do that. So what I did was I just made a cover, put a label, use cover and less charging, tethered it to the case. I think that's safe enough. I'm sure someone will manage to catch it on something and it'll get forgotten from time to time, but it's not deadly dangerous. And so... That is that. Of course, now that it says use the charger with green labels, well, I had to assemble a charger with green labels. So this is the charger for that pack, but it's useful for other stuff. So I just set it up with um, an XT connector that I can use to either, you know, I could put a pair of a clamps on it, charge a lead acid battery or whatever. But what it is, is a Meanwell AC-DC power supply. The, that particular Meanwell model and several others, but not all of them, has a constant current, constant voltage behavior. So it acts just like an automatic charger. It'll continue delivering 5.6 amps at about 14.6 volts until it hits 14.6 volts on the DC outside and uh, you can adjust it with that little trim pot there. So you set the target voltage and then connect a battery to it and it runs it up to that target voltage and then feathers the current gradually down to zero to maintain that voltage and then it stops. So sometimes those meanwhile power supplies make good cheap chargers. This one I happen to have around. I bought it, you know, intending to make a charger like this with it for uh, some application with lithium iron phosphate cells in a 12 volt config. And here we have one, but it means it'll, it'll charge that pack pretty quickly at 5.6 amps. It'll take it just two hours to recharge that pack and that, well, it'll probably take three hours. But voila, means we got uh, new to us. Here's the low speed, high speed. And I could pretty much do that all day. So yeah, success compared to this bugger, which can only do it for what, an hour 15, I said? I think it was an hour, an hour and, and change. So now you can run the backpack sprayer for two and a half hours steady, by which point hopefully you'll be done or tired of it. You can recharge it relatively quickly too. All right, I hope this helps someone either with a solo backpack sprayer that they want to update or interest in building small tough lithium packs. Um, this one's obviously not armored enough to be really tough, but I think it's gonna be robust enough for this application. All right, thanks for watching.